What's good, YouTube? This is Pop One Podcast with Larry Boyle. What's up, man? Now, what did you do? I got uh, top 15 at the uh, New Orleans or Kenner uh, le- uh, Legacy of Destruction uh, Regional with a uh, voiceless voice, but not just any, not not your grandmother's voiceless voice. All right, this is this is Breaker voiceless voice. You know, it'll make more sense as we go. On. we have to play the starters so we're playing the three diviners and then the one the trias you normal the diviner you send entis herald the trias it just gets you started it's a really powerful normal summon then we're playing three low you have to play three low it is the cornerstone of the entire deck three Sephira. Again, it's just mandatory. She's way too good. She just reads plus one. There, is, I have seen some people be a little confused on this, on your ratios for your ritual monsters. This is mandatory. You need to play two Seravis. You need to play two Skull Guardian. Seravis in the opener is absurd because if you normal a Diviner or a Low and they have an Imprimer of Valor, Seravis in hand blanks it. It checks it. It, it keeps you going. The hardest thing this deck has is getting started. Uh, we do play one old man. He's just kind of like nice. You don't really ever want to see him. He's just kind of like a nice thing to tag into off the trap card. Uh, we play three barrier. I mean, that's obvious. It's obvious. It's it's Rhoda. It protects. It, it does everything. It's the reason this deck is so good. Uh, you play two prayers. If you only play the one, the deck can run out of gas really quickly, really easily. Even at two copies, sometimes you can lock yourself out of using the Sephira, because in order to get Sephira and Grave, you have to have the ritual spell in your deck to be able to send it. So it's just good to play two, plus the floating effect is absurd. Now the new card, Blessing, this is a custom card. Now given it's a custom card, you still only want to see the one. Uh, it gets you an endless uh, loop of resources, and it lets you ritual summon on your opponent's turn, which takes this deck from being pretty good from where it was before to absolutely dominant now. With this card, you can Seravis up to three times in one turn on your opponent's turn. It's incredible. Uh, you play one trap card, uh, it's just versatility. In some cases, you don't want to Seravis three times, and in a case like that, sometimes you just really need to be able to go trap card, pop, blessing, bring back, trap card, pop, blessing, bring back. Sometimes it, that is just the way the game goes, and you gotta be able to adapt for that. Our honorary voiceless card, Fenrir. Oh, yeah. This card is insane in this deck. It is full free material when you use a Sephira, because Sephira does not have to use light monsters, it can just use any monster. And plus it's Fenrir, so, I, I mean, yeah. Uh, we play two pre-prep. I'm taking this up to three. This card just reads plus one. It's absurd. It beats ashes. It gets you just there. It's absurd. The two prosperity, just more or less the same thing. Uh, I do recommend keeping it at two because it's not a card that you always want to see, but it's pretty nice. Instant Fusion. Um, no, why not? Everybody knows what Instant Fusion does. I'm going to get a little more in-depth as to why we uh, play the Instant Fusion later when we get to the extra. All right. We are playing the three Ogres in main. Ogre is incredible in this format. This card clears almost every tough matchup in the game. Against Tenpai, it solos. Against the Mirror, it solos. Against certain Snake Eye hands, it can be turn ending. Now for the board breaker things. Enemy controller in the main. Now, oh, yeah, no, you're like tributing off a monster. When too, I. Huh? went to the regional and people saw that I was main decking this, they looked at me like I was insane. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is, uh, as Yu-Gi-Oh players can't read, Diviner activates when tributed, Econ tributes for cost. So you're going second, your opponent already has an established board, you go Diviner, they attempt to use a form of targeted negation or something to take care of it, you just go Econ. It allows you to not only still get your full combo, but pivot towards an Entis or a Arc Light to, keep, to get yourself extra advantage while still getting your full combo and breaking apart your opponent's board. This, it feels like cheating. Like, it, it is insane. It's so good. 
Next up, we have Super Poly. I don't think anyone needs to explain how insane this card is. Uh, cannot respond. Cannot no. respond. A, a line of text they never should have printed on a game about interaction. So this is a weird one. I opted to go for Forbidden Droplet. The choice was either Forbidden Droplet or Infinite Impermanence. I chose Droplet because this deck's worst matchup is Branded. If you go against a Branded player, the game is just over. Like, you, you lost before it even started. This card checks the Albion because it does not target. It doesn't. It just. It just stops it. If they resolve anything, the, the game is basically over, and you need to be able to play around the public lock. So these droplets do matter. I never played against Branded in any of my runs, but in the mirror match, there were a lot of times when my opponent would try to crash our Skull Guardians, and I would just go droplet, uh, and then it would just clear most of the board on its own. Anyways, I did enjoy this. I do feel like experimenting with this in the side is a possibility. Now we're gonna go on to the extra deck. There are a couple of mandatories in the extra deck that I feel like you need to play. Secure Gardna and Almirage. This is a very interesting uh, combo line in case you open Low and a Ritual Monster. The way the line goes, it, it is uh, you normal the Low. Low grabs you the barrier. The barrier is going to go ahead and get you the Blessing. You're going to link off the Low for Al Mirage. You're going to go Blessing Effect to add Low back to your hand. Then you're going to link this off for Secure Gardena. Blessing will be able to trigger. You can Ritual Summon the Skull Guardian. Using this, this plays around Droll. Uh, it gets you to complete full combo. The amount that this can set up for you and how little you need to actually have in your hand for it to resolve is just absurd. I'm playing Dynamondo. This card is absolutely mandatory. I do feel like um, this card could go up to two. It is so good against not only the Mirror, but against Runic. It's so good against Runic. Next up is Typhon. The this, card explains itself. It, the card it. explains itself. It's Typhon. Um, Harold and Entis, these are your uh, Diviner targets. Anima, skill check. Your opponent's bad. Wins the game. Lina, I thought about taking it out, and I think I'm actually not going to because in the mirror match, this card is actually crazy. You can just actually crack. take a Skull Guardian, or since everyone is kind of starting to play Ogre now, this is a free SP. Speaking of which, SP. Ooh. Why ain't it Starlight? Uh, cause I'm poor. Card's $120. I feel like that kind of speaks about uh, what, it, what it is and what it do. So we are playing two Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Uh, we play one for Super Poly, and we play one for the Instant Fusion. So in case you are going first, or if you're going second, and you know that your opponent is playing a lot of targeted negation, you go Mud Dragon, call Light, and now you know for a fact that all of your stuff is safe until you get your board established. The other option is Millennium Eyes Restrict. I mean, your opponent goes for a Droll, it checks it. Your opponent goes for a Shifter, if they're bad, it still checks it. This card did perform quite a bit. Um, I did open the institution a couple times. It was incredible. I am debating on how much I really like the uh, space it takes, but it is a very fun package to run. Then the rest of the super poly targets, it's Garura, Dragostopelia, and Earth Golem adding a Nister. A lot of Snake Eye players are starting to end on IP and Appaloosa. This wins. This card reads win the game if you have Super Poly against that board. So that's it for the extra. There is a couple of wiggle room, but overall I do feel like for this style of build, it's pretty good. Your going first package is going to be uh, Odd Eyes uh, Pendulum Graph Dragon and three Judgments. Uh, Judgment having the ability to negate summons is just, I mean, it's the whole point of the card. But it really matters a lot in this current environment with decks like Tenpai and Yubel. And all of these decks that have these crazy ways of summoning these big bosses. But all of that power is pointed in one point. So if you can just say, no, does, is not real, does not exist. Judgment is crazy right now. Um, and then Pengraph. It's just kind of like a extra going first, little tack on at the end of your end board. It just negates spells, uh, gets you recursion at the end of your turn. Uh, if it stays long enough, it's, it's not bad. Uh, next up is three drool. Tis the format, and the necessary evil will show itself. Uh, 
I am playing two talents in the side. If you know you're going first, just throw, toss them in, because you know your opponent's going to be playing every hand trap under the sun. Uh, play one bestial uh, magnema and one bestial druus worm. Magnema can search uh, any archetypal dragon. It can search Sephira, it can search Seravis. Uh, both of them, the old man and the ritual, they're both incredible. They both did a lot in the mirrors, too. That's really cool. And then back row eight. Of course, the feather duster. Have the to play back row eight. Um, three cosmics is crazy. Plays around floodgates, plays around runic, plays around basically anything that's scary. Definitely plays around stun. A lot of you bastards running Golgonda, this checks it. Duster, I never thought the Tay would come where I would say this. I actually think Duster is optional here. I think there could be a couple of other slots that this could be. As well as these, I also think that DD Crow could be very relevant uh, instead. But this is what got me to top 15. So. Alrighty, what did you actually place at this tournament? Uh, I did get 15th place. Okay, um, that's cool. I went uh, X2, seven rounds. Alrighty. Yep. Now, do you have any shout outs? I do. I have shout outs for Alex and Tyler, both of my goats who helped me put this deck together, and the entire Pop One team for just being there and supporting me this entire Absolutely. time. Shout out to especially Pandemonium. Uh, it was such a great event, such great people, great judge staff, great environment. Uh, the pizza place that was right next door was incredible. So good. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed everything about it. Alrighty, well, thank you so much for the interview. Yeah, of